And we're joined now in the media center by our third place finisher, and that's Kurt Bush. He drives the number 41 Haas Autom Automation Chevrolet for Stuart Haas Racing. And our fourth place finisher and our top Sunoco Rookie of the Year candidate is Kyle Larson, and he drives the number 42 Target Chevrolet. Gentlemen, what an outstanding uh, show you put on for us today. Uh, wasn't easy out there, uh, but Kurt, talk about uh, your bid to, uh, to win here today. I know you gave it all you could. Uh, just talk about the race out there here this afternoon. Yeah, it was a heck of a race for us on the 41 uh, Haas Automation Chevy. We were in position all day. We ran uh, top five and, you know, executed well in the pits. I thought our strategy uh, played out well. And the final pit stop was, was flawless, and that put us in position to race with Ambrose. And earlier in the day, I was able to distance myself from the 47 car. Uh, and, and then I realized, you know, he was on a different tire sequence. And so he was going to be a force to be reckoned with at the end. And he, uh, he held his serve. Al Almendinger deserves this win. He did a tremendous job to race Ambrose, one of the best guys in the world at driving, um, you know, one of these stock cars. Those two put on a good show. I thought I was sitting in a, in a good spot running third, hoping that the two would wipe each other out just enough that uh, we would drive our Chevy into victory lane. Uh, but our, our team, you know, executed a, a nice weekend. You know, in the wake of everything that happened, it was uh, hard to stay focused. Uh, the red flag today was an extremely long red flag, even the one at the end. Uh, a lot of things to overcome today, and I just tried to put the blinders on, stay focused, and deliver for my team. Thank you, Kurt. And Kyle, another solid f finish for you here today as you continue to post these s top ten, top five finishes uh, in, in, in your bid to, to get into that chase. Just talk about your run out here today at uh, Watkins Glen. Yeah, you know, I'm super, uh, super proud of my team and, and myself. You know, I was extremely down on myself um, after practice. Um, I was terrible. I was at best maybe a top 30 car and um, you're just, just mad at myself, but knew I was going to have lots of opportunity to learn uh, in the nationwide race and then throughout the cup race, too. So um, just worked really hard all day long. Uh, kind of just tried to stay out of trouble in the beginning. Um, you know, anytime somebody would outbreak me, I'd just let them go. And, um, you know, then we had that long red, and I told myself I need to be more aggressive on restarts. I, th I knew we had a pretty good car because I'd get – you know, clear track, and I could catch the guy in front of me. And um, from then, I just you know, had to get better at outbreaking people, hit my marks consistently, and uh, you did a good job of that and was able to get a top five, which is uh, unbelievable because I really thought we'd be lucky to get a top 20 today. So um, super proud of my target team. I uh, had a blast today. And um, you're know, happy for AJ, uh, but in, in a way it kind of, you know, makes it tougher for us to even make the chase again. So um, just got to keep having top five runs, top ten runs, and hope we can maybe squeak out a win soon. But uh, if, if not, we got to be consistent. Thank you, Kyle. Questions for Kurt or Kyle? We'll start here with Reed, and then we'll go to Stan. Reed, then Stan. Please state your name and your affiliation, please. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Kurt, um, as hard as those two guys were racing and leaning on each other those last two laps, were you surprised that they both made it back to the finish line? Yeah, very surprised. You know, if, if you have a, a spot like that on the line to make the chase and you're two guys that have never been in it before racing at a road course where they, they have uh, not the upper hand, but they have a lot more confidence than they would on an oval, I, I just watched it all day long. I was like, hey, if I run third, that's as, almost as good as being able to win this thing because those two are going to bring back just the steering wheel only. I mean, I, I really thought that they did a phenomenal job to, to beat the heck out of each other, uh, maintain a pace that didn't allow me to get close enough. Uh, there was just one moment I had. I, I wanted to go low on the back straightaway. It would have been three wide, and my right sides would have been in the grass. And I couldn't quite make it, getting into the bus stop to clear those two. And, you know, it was just a phenomenal show. Those two deserve a lot of credit. Almendinger brought home the, the trophy, and he deserves it. Ambrose gave everything he could. I was just hoping that, yes, those two would get a bit overzealous and I'd be able to scoop by them and uh, pick up the win for our well, team. It wasn't for lack of effort. <laughs> <laughs> and our race runner-up has joined us now, and that's Marcos Ambrose. He drove the number nine Stanley Ford, and, and Marcos certainly, uh, you know, we've talked to you several times here this weekend. Uh, you were a race winner here yesterday. You, you gave it your all here today, and, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you said on Friday 
you know, you come out of here Sunday and you know that you've given it all, given it your all, you're going to keep your head held high. And that's what I sense from you right now. Yeah, you know, first of all, congratulations to AJ and the 47 team. They, they're good friends of mine over there. I, I drove for, for uh, Tad and Jody Schechter and Brad Doherty for a long time and I wasn't quite able to seal the deal for a race win for them. I'm really pleased that they've got their, their race win like that. Thrilled for AJ too, his first big win. And, uh, you know, disappointed for me though, I've got to tell you. It, uh, you know, we threw everything we could at it. Um, we, we knew what's at stake. And uh, we, we, we had a great race car, let a lot of laps, just uh, come up a little bit short. Questions now for these three competitors. Uh, we'll open it back up. Stan? Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight. A comment, it's actually for all three of you. How do you get yourself back in focus after like an hour and 20 minute red flag so that when you go back to racing, it's just like you never stop? How'd you get back in focus? I just always go through a checklist like it's the start of the race. Uh, and then you mi your mindset transfers into uh, what's still left to do. And so it's just you, you try to uh, paint a, uh, an image in your mind of a checklist, and you just go through those, those numbers. And then once they drop the green flag, you're back in race routine. That's what I do. I think about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, yeah, uh, Kurt's right. You just when when he's jumping a car, whether it's practice or a race or after red flag, you just go through you know your own routine. Okay, what are you after? What do you got to do? You know, you just sort of cycle through how you got to where you're at and what you got to do. You know, to the run home, and we, we're all paid. You know, we're professionals out there. <laughs> we should be able to turn it on and off like a light switch. Other questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. Lee has one. <clears throat> Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. Kurt, can you just talk about comebacks? You know about making a valiant, valiant comeback. Um, what AJ's been able to do, whether, you know, go, getting the ride at Penske, then coming back, finding back, you know about stuff like that. For him to do what he did and then when, I mean, can you talk about how gratifying that must be to the kid? Yeah, I think to answer your question, I'll start in reverse. And he won the race today in a in a fashion that that everyone is proud of him for doing to beat one of the best in the world at driving these stock cars he deserves the trophy and he had to pull from within he had to dig in deep and he had to believe in himself all the way through this when you're um, out there racing and you're in the groove uh, and you're doing your thing uh, you know it can go week after week where you don't have opportunities to win and he was rebuilding getting himself in position with that team and the team continued to gain strength and they believed in him I mean I think they're in here on Friday announcing a sponsor agreement and they're moving forward with a long-term contract that was the first step in, in helping him understand uh, where his future was going to be and then for him to deliver today it's it's that confidence that grows when you're when you're spreading around um, well, when you when you're spreading around all that I guess fertilizer when you're cultivating that hard work and it, now it's starting to turn around for you he deserves it. He's put himself through um, all those mental challenges, and today he, he persevered. He didn't break down, and he brought home a victory. So we're all very proud of him. Let's go to this gentleman right here in the black uh, polo. If we could get him a uh, microphone, please. Hi, Ron Flatter with RSN Radio in Melbourne. Marcos, could you take us through the exchange of leads on the second to last lap and how A.J. was able to expand his lead? Uh, I can't remember much of it, but uh, I know there was a lot of door banging going on, a lot of corners that we went round side by side, and... Uh, you know, I got my tyres really hot doing that, and, um, you know, I slid coming off turn 11 after I got the lead, and, um, you know, he was able to get it back before the caution dropped. And uh, that was probably the difference between, you know, winning and losing the race right there. If I could have held the lead uh, when the caution came out, I would have uh, probably had the advantage on the restart and probably been able to bend him off. But, you know, it's just racing. It's what it is. It's what it's all about. You know, you, you lean on him on a, on a restart. You try to take a couple of chances, and, uh, you know, I'm just pleased we got up through the S's side by side without wrecking the whole field because... <laughs> It could have easily happened out there. Other questions? Let's go to this young man right here. Bond from WHEC in Rochester. We had a tragic event not too far from here last night involving no. Tony Stewart. I, I don't know how aware you are of it, but a 20-year-old racer died last night. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that event. <coughs> you know, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the Ward family. You know, it was a tragedy, and, and our thoughts and prayers are with everybody involved. It's a tough situation for the motorsports world. And... You know, I, I, I just, I'm not at liberty really to speak any more of it. Any additional questions for these three competitors? All set. 
Stu, right here, please. Uh, Stu Hodum, NASCAR.com, for Marcos and Kyle. You, Kyle, you expressed really well that it's coming down to the wire here. you got four races to go, Michigan, Bristol, Atlanta, Richmond. So if each of you could maybe talk about what you, where you think your best shot is to get that, and are you gearing up for one more than the other? Man, I just finished the closest race <laughs> of my life, so I haven't thought about points. I'll have a look at that on Monday. But, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're decent in the championship position. I think it was 16th or something, so I'll have a look at it overnight. And we've got to obviously score points, but we, we really need to focus on winning. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I think Michigan's a good track for me as well as Bristol and Atlanta. So I have uh, three, three tracks I'm really confident at. So um, just... Go go to each track with the same game plan as to uh, you know shoot for a win, but if not, try and be as far forward as you can. So um, it's crazy to think that you know with a 16 car chase, it'd be harder to make it than it was previously. You know it, where I I'm, I'm in the top 12 right now and I'm sweating, <laughs> getting trying to get locked in the chase. So um, but it's exciting. It's exciting for all the race teams that that got to step up and and for the fans that pay attention to it. So. Uh, I think NASCAR did a good job with the change. It's uh, made everybody step up even more. Let's go over here to the right, Ron. Uh, this is uh, from Marcos and, and maybe just a comment also from uh, Kurt. Um, Marcos, you were involved in a tremendous scrap uh, with Brad here a couple of years ago. And, and just viewing that last lap, um, it looked equally as exciting. And, and so I, m I want you to at least maybe talk a little bit more about that last lap and maybe you pressuring um, coming out of uh, the inner loop and getting getting by AJ and then AJ making a equally good move going to turn 10. Just talk a little bit about that. Maybe, Kurt, you can kind of, you saw that going on. Give me your reaction to that because it was, it was uh, some pretty, pretty good racing. Yeah, look, I, I run him really hard up, up through the... Um uh, off turn one, I was on the outside of him and, uh, and, and tried to run side by side with him through two. Had to pull back in line and, uh, you know, I knew that, uh, you know, I didn't have long to try to get the lead back and he had a really bad run through the bus stop, got himself loose and out of shape and I, I had a bit of a sh dive up the inside thinking he was going to slide up the hill. He tried to check it, we got into each other and, uh, you know, I was able to slide underneath him and, and take the lead. But uh, I gave him, you know, I had to give him some room on the outside too because I knew he was going to come back on the, on the track there and, and, uh, you know, he landed on me getting into uh, turn 10 or 6, whatever you want to call it there. And, and uh, you know, pushed me wide. I shook the front tyres and, and ran wide. That was my bad. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, just tight racing. You know, you, we're running on worn-out tyres. You know, we're racing for a, a lot. And uh, you just do whatever you can to try to get the lead and uh, rattle the guy's cage. Well, uh, not for me personally. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's what we come to the track for, is to put on a good show. I love when, it's, um, when you've positioned yourself to out-duel somebody at the end of a race. Whether it's a short track, a road course, you know, an intermediate track, you have those moments, but they're not as, uh, as great. But super speedways, you know, it's always a battle when, uh, when there's green-white checkers. and you just see it. It's what gets the juices flowing. It's what needs to be documented about the great show that was put on today. It's why I think we're near to a sellout crowd the last three years here at Watkins Glen. It puts on a tremendous show. That's what NASCAR is all about. Any <coughs> excuse me. Any additional questions? You have another one, Ron? <coughs> one last thing for Kurt. Um, any uh, thoughts on uh, getting back in the Indy 500 next year, or is this way too <laughs> pre premature or whatever? Yeah, it's a bit too early. Uh, right now our focus is the chase and uh, trying to keep others from punching their ticket to get in. And right. today Almendinger got in. But, you know, no, um, we won't know much news. You know, we'll, let's see uh, how their season ends, uh, how our season goes. Right now I'm focused on this 41 car to run for the championship. Would you like to do it, though? Or? Yeah, I'd like to do it. We'll see how it pans out. Okay, thanks. Final question. Stan, right there in the middle. Can we get him, him a mic, please? <clears throat> Stan Greekmore again with RPM tonight.com and Kurt I, I want to advance you and, and instead of being a driver I want you to be a teacher right now what would you tell Marco Sambros he needs to do to get that win to, to definitely be in the chase well, was, yeah Jimmy he should Johnson. have wrecked Almondinger I mean <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping they'd both wreck each other yeah. 
it's um, it, it's putting yourself in position, and they did that today. And it's what he has to do again at Michigan and Bristol, Atlanta, Richmond. You know, whether it's done with pitch strategy, whether it's done with good race cars. Uh, I haven't looked at his point situation to know. I know um, Larson's on that bubble of, of guys making it in on points. It's um, You can't start stretching yourself too thin, though, here at this time of the year. You just keep plugging away, and you wish you were in a better position. I mean, I know Larson's over there biting his fingernails, but he's in position where Ambrose wants to attack and jump on those guys. Um, that's what the chase is all about. It's, uh, it's win and you're in. And I'm sure we're going to see, as the races get closer here, people doing more dramatic things to try to uh, take a chance to have a run at the championship. I believe we have one more question at the final, all the way to the back. Go ahead. My name is Ted Gold, Warner Cable News. This is for Kurt and Marcos. Obviously, a lot of turns here and a lot of unpredictable stuff happens. You know, a couple caution flags this year, I guess. What changes to your strategy do you make when you're on a road track versus an uh, oval course? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I just... A road course like ovals has its certain points in the race where the the first set of tires you run a certain way, the second set of tires, and then at the end you know that it's your last set of tires and it's all about track position, and uh, it's it's a defensive mode. But if you have the offense, use it. Uh, road courses, it's it's more of a routine. It's a checklist type feel where you're looking for your braking marker, you're hitting your shift points, and you do it lap after lap. It's just repetition. Oval tracks, you kind of go off the feel of how your car's feeling and you dive down into the corner uh, and you pick up the gas in certain spots. It's not the same every lap. Road courses is a lot of uh, mental checklists. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in, putting on a great show Thanks. for us, and we'll see you at Michigan. Thank you.